it's West Coast Ramble. This week we're talking with drive-by trucker and owner of Dialback Sound, Matt Patton. Amber Fox is going to show off her vintage house, and young McKinley James will show off some very cool picking. And Andrew Himmler will give us the lowdown on his band, the Delta Bombers. With host Big Sandy, Pope Paul, and me, Tom. We've even got a call coming in from our good buddy, Jeff West. So fire up your keyboard, it's West Coast Ramble. Hey guys, we are live here at uh, West Coast Ramble episode 47, and we got our friend uh, Pope Paul. Say hello, Paul. How you doing, guys? Good to be back here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, and then we've got our other friend, Big Sandy. Say hello to Big Sandy. Hello, Big Sandy. Oh, that's me. Hello out there. I've missed you all. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a week, Mr. Big Sandy. What have you been doing? Where, where have you been traveling to this last week? I've been traveling from my bedroom to the kitchen, to the restroom, back to my bedroom. In a uh, constant cycle for the last, uh, how, Lord knows how many days. How many has it been yet? Has it been two days or has it been 83? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, friends, uh, before we get started, I need to do a little bit of house cleaning because some things have happened during the last week. And thank you very much for watching West Coast Ramble and being involved. We're trying to get everyone involved. Remember, you can also comment in. we got a couple thumbs up and stuff, but it gets fun when you guys start commenting in and being a part of the show. But... We wanted to thank um, our Amy Van Atta for uh, sending us 20 bucks. That helps us out on the show. If, and also, if anyone wants to donate, we got the Venmo thing right there. And whatever you can do, if you feel like it, if you don't have any bucks, that's fine too, man. Thanks for watching. And we also, on the top of our page where it says, what does it say? Uh, there's, there's, I turned a button right there. It says uh, Shop Now. Hit that and it goes to our PayPal. If you got like two bucks or something you want to do support, we kind of split it among ourselves and give it to the uh, to the One, people that are two. on our show too. So that's helping. Okay. Oh, and another thing, uh, Axel uh, from uh, Rhythm Collision, he says they're going to start doing pre-sale May first. So uh, Robert, are you involved this year in the in the Axel's Rhythm Collision out in Riverside? Well, we haven't spoken uh, yet about that. I sure hope that we are. Um, but. For those of you out there listening who might maybe uh, might not be aware of the Rhythm Collision, it's every year in Southern California in January uh, in Riverside, California. And it's really a, a beautiful homegrown event. It kind of reminds me of the early days of Eva Las Vegas. And something about that event brings out some people that I don't see at, at any other festival, people that used to be involved in the scene in the 80s and 90s. Um, and so it's really a, an event to look forward to. And this past year, there was a lot of new people there, too. Uh, in Southern California. Yeah. What oh, was that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Yeah, but you're right, Robert. That's uh, we, we actually got to play our Moondogs gig over there. That was fun. And it was also the very last show that Dick Dale did. We were part of that. So he gets some some cool um, older acts, but it mixes them with the new. It's, it's a good show. Yeah. So anyway, oh, and one last thing, friends, before we get started with our first guest, uh, Atomic Swag is our new sponsor for the show. And, All right. Uh, yeah, Atomic Swag, that's our, our buddy Shorty. He's got uh, something going on over there. And they've got uh, vintage tees for, let's see, uh, let's see if I could do this right, all my technical stuff. They've got uh, vintage tees like this. This is their, uh, their Speedway Vintage Moto tee for men and women. That's kind of cool. They've got uh, the Hellcats U.S. Squadron shirt you're looking at right there, and also uh, other things for the gals as well, including these. What are these? These are tippy toppers as well as cardigans. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, support our buddy, uh, AtomicSwag.com. Go check them out, and uh, if you can, you know, go go buy yourself something nice over there. All right. So we're back here, and um, let me get my friend Paul up. Let's get rid of this here. And his dog and his family. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Paul. Hey, Paul. Yes, now, sir. You're in charge of getting people on this show. Uh, we got uh, our first guest. Tell tell the folks a little bit about our first guest. All right. Well, this guy here is a phenomenal bass player, and uh, he's uh, made it with a few bands, uh, one called the Dexatines and another one called the Drive-By Truckers. But we first... Uh, actually, I first worked with him and met him through Dial Back Sound out of, out of Water Valley, Mississippi, which is Matt's record label that he helped start out down there. And uh, he takes on a bunch of different bands, helps us get our first chance to put out a vinyl record, supports and, you know, has there always a really good deal for every band is really supportive, you know, it's like it's a lot like what you hear about how the way 
it was to be on a record label back in the day to have somebody just kind of, all right, here's the studio, do your thing, and we'll worry about what the numbers are and everything else later, but we're excited to get you in here and get you going on in your musical career. So it's great to have him. He's also, you know, to tie in with last week, uh, he was on J.D. Wilkes' solo album as a bass player, and they recorded that, I think, in Memphis. Um, and he also he records people like Jimbo Mathis, uh, one of my favorite bands off of Dial Back is The Great Dying. Uh, it's our friend Will out in uh, Mississippi as well. And uh, just an outstanding guy all around. Yeah, Good yeah. follow him on Twitter, I would say, too. <laughs> okay. So, well, I don't we... know. Are you, uh, you there, Matt? Yeah, hold on a second. He's, hey, he's, yo. uh, he's coming up. He's waiting my... for you to finish. He's coming. Up, he's coming up on our system real quick. Hey, while we're waiting for Matt to come up on our system, let's uh, we go through some of these notes here. We got this gal named um, Angel Avia Williams says, "Hi guys, I love you all. How fun to watch you guys." She seems like a nice person. Well, she happens to be my mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all know Angie. But, and she's also a nice person. Hey, there he is. Oh, there we. Oh, we got him. Okay, let's let's hey, smack a hand for uh, Matt hey, Patton. Uh, Hey, all right. So, hey, Paul, I'm going to let you take this because uh, you know Matt the best way. I've, I've seen a lot of his, his videos. They're drive-by truckers are huge. And uh, maybe you could take this over. Uh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. So <clears throat> I just want to talk, I guess, as a musician at first, uh, Matt. <clears throat> so what was it like for you coming up as a young musician? Who are some of the people you played with in the South? And like, what kind of led to you getting into the Dexatines? If you can maybe tell, and even tell us a little bit about your background. You know, what what inspired you to even start playing bass as well? Uh, you know, I started playing playing bass because I kind of had to. You know, <laughs> um, yeah, I started playing. You know, I went to a, a Pentecostal church growing up, which was like the pew jumping old gospel sound. Um, and I started playing guitar when I was probably 14 or so. And a few months later, our church lost our bass player. Um, and they came into my Sunday school class and said, uh, we're going to need you to play bass. And I was like, I I'm a guitar player. And they said, well, you play bass <laughs> now. Uh, so the yeah. first time I ever touched a bass was, you know, in front of all my little church friends, uh, just in front of the whole congregation. Uh, yeah. Uh, how, hey, how old were you when you did that? 14 or 15 years old. Yeah. Uh, were you, were you, you know, playing in any other bands before that? Or you just kind of, no, kinda no, I there? was, I was, you know, I wasn't even really taking lessons. I was just kind of sitting in my bedroom for hours at a time, banging on the guitar, you know, trying to make it sound like I wanted it to sound. Um, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the piano player at that church was the first person who really, you know, kind of took me seriously and took me under her wing. And we're still friends today. Uh, um, actually one of the first things I recorded when I, when I bought the studio was, was I, I brought her in to record her, uh, piano plan. Um, but, uh, yeah, she said, just listen to my left hand and what I'm doing and we'll, we'll, we'll get there together, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and like that gospel really was the primer for, uh, everything, you know, that I would go on to play anything I would ever need to play blues country, um, you know, even the punk rock stuff that I played in the Dexatines, um, they liked that I knew how to, how to, you know, grease my way and walk my way and, you know, between the changes, uh, yeah. everybody else was just kind of doing the Ramones thing, you know, um, which is great. But, uh, I would, you know, I would walk myself to the next change, you know, like, like a gospel player would do. And, yeah, uh, I was curious about that because, like, we're from Southern California, and the way we learned our music was not majority of people not in a Pentecostal church or anything like that. Do you find there's a difference between players from around the country, like the Southern players, as opposed to like the West Coast players or New York players? Is there is there a style you can find from these guys? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think you know playing in church is a very Southern thing. You know, it's like when you read. Uh, about uh your heroes in the uk they always met at art school you know um there seemed to be uh a key um so you know uh 
like Bronson and I, that's that's the way we connected. Really, um, was that we were both Pentecostal church players. Um, uh, Bronson that helps me run the studio. Uh, we own the studio Dialback Sound together in Water Valley, Mississippi. You know that, I, that that's the reason that we gel so well. Um, the reason you know we we get each other's references because we're we're coming from the same starting point. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. having that gospel background. Um, you know, well, I think uh, it's not. If this is hey, hey, Big Sandy here. How you doing, man? Hey, but great. I, I, but but I I think it I, I think it's cool that you're carrying on a tradition along along with the other guys that you play with in the in the in the two different groups and other some of your other friends. It, it, I think it's always been that way. It's been the gospel music uh, that runs uh, the vein of gospel music that has run through uh, soul, like southern soul and uh, southern rock, and I think that's what sets it apart. And it's a very regional thing and. Uh, it's something you can really put your, your finger on it because, you know, it comes from gospel, but it's more of a feel. Um, but it is cool. I'm, I'm glad you're carrying on that tradition. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's it's like, I guess probably by the time I was in my mid-20s, um, you know, the, the more contemporary gospel music had made it to the South. Um, and you don't really get the younger players like that anymore, you know. Uh they have their own sort of thing going on. Uh, yeah. T- tell me, t- tell me about the drive-by truckers for like people that are watching this show right now who really who who don't know who you are. It's a very popular group. Um, what do you, what do you guys? What would you categorize your music as? Oh, I like to call it a southern literary rock. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> southern lit rock. Um, you know, it's it's very storytelling uh, based. Um, you know, a lot of uh, Southern folklore um, told from just, you know, kind of a, a working class uh, perspective. You know, I think every sort of culture has their bands like that, you know, be it the Pogues or be it like Los Lobos or, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's like uh, we're, we're sort of that for the South. We're like like the North has Springsteen. You know, it's yeah. it's just sort of we're wrapping all of that the, the the best and worst parts of the of the region here, you know, into the storytelling. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, the yeah. legends, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I listen. I, I listen to some of your stuff, and I and it's definitely it's well written. Like all the songs really do tell a story, so that's what I liked about it. You know, like so. Well, you know, I had a long history with the band as an outsider, you know, just sort of friends with the band. My old band, the Dexteens, toured with them. And, it, you know, it's like it really took a little while to, to, to get it. You know, it wasn't something I was really drawn to um, other than just because we were buddies at first, you know. And I think I really got into the to Mike Cooley songs first because at the, at the time I met them, they had the three songwriters, which was... Uh, Jason Isbell and Patterson Hood and Mike Cooley were all writing songs. And Cooley's thing was immediately accessible to me because I was a big Stones fan, you know, and he had such a Stonesy sort of thing about him, you know. Yeah. Uh, and he wrote he wrote the more humorous songs, you know, uh, which you know, I love, you know. But uh, really kind of listening to the stories that Patterson tells, I, I, I got drawn to it because, you know, it's, it's not uh, – it's it's sort of uh, it's 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 a challenge, you know, to to listen. Sometimes the songs are a little longer, but you know, if you like good storytelling, yeah, it's all there, you know. But when you guys, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, I'd like to know how did you end up with a studio producer? I know that you produced my my good friend uh, Paul Boyer, his, his band. Uh, they they've been out in your studio and uh, recording, mm-hmm. and. What kind of studio is it? Is it like do you got tape? Are you going uh, digital, or, or did you get like some vintage mixing board and, and knocking it out that way? Or what's your studio yeah, it's like? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of all that, you know. Um, it's kind of like a, there's a one inch eight tape machine there that's kind of our, our workhorse. Um, so what we love to do is is track you know as much as possible live to the to the one inch eight, and then kind of move to the computer for quick edits. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of old vintage outboard gear there. Um, an old cons, an old MCI console. Um, you know, there's a real, 
uh, one ton loss in plate there for reverb. Um, there's um, uh, there's a spring unit from the forties there for reverb. Um, but yeah, you know, we, we kind of just, uh, use the digital for the speed and ease of editing really. Yeah. Now I, I know you did uh, Pope Paul and the illegals over there. I heard that. That's not great. Are you producing or just engineering? And also what other artists have, do you have going through dial back sound? You know, we had, uh, there's an SLO band from, uh, called the dead volts, uh, that came through the Turkey Buzzards, which are also from that area. Um, I'm trying to think about all the West Coasters first. All the big um, ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, Jimbo Mathis from Squirrel Nut Zippers produces records out of there because he just lives about 10 minutes up the road from me. Oh. Um, he did one there right before this latest uh, trouble with the with the virus going around. Um, he was just there with an artist uh, producing. Um, and, you know, he makes most of his own records there. Um, we had a Portland singer, Jerry Joseph, that came out. Um, uh, it's just hard to think about everybody, you know, <laughs> going back. <laughs> yeah. If you can, really a quick. Lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the blues guys that recorded for Fat Possum um, came through there. Because you know, most a lot of them are from just north of us in Holly Springs. Uh, that's where you know, just north of us, about forty minutes is where like Arl Burnside is from, and uh, 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 Junior Kimbrough. Uh, those guys are all all came from about forty minutes from here. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us like what led to you? you know, starting up dial back and taking over and like, what, what is your attitude to supporting a band? Like what mm -hmm. makes you want to add it to the label? Well, you know, uh, I moved to the water, I, I moved to the water Valley, um, you know, when I got married, um, and, and my wife was from Oxford, just about 20 minutes up the road. And, you know, a lot of people, told me when I moved here that we were, we would start bands, you know, we would, we would do all this stuff together. But really the one thing that started happening was that Bruce Watson, um, who engineered a lot of the early fat possum blues releases, um, you know, started having me come do sessions at his studio, um, which is dialed back sound. It was his studio before it was mine. Um, and so, you know, when I would come out here to visit my wife in water Valley, sometimes I'd come over and do a session and that's that's really the one thing that I had going because you know when you move to a new scene in your mid 30s it's like changing high schools in the 11th grade you know there wasn't really a whole lot musically for me to do out this way um, but I did have those sessions so when Bruce got ready to move to Memphis and move his studio there you know he's like I'm going to sell the studio uh, to a guy who's going to turn it into a duplex and you know I, I thought about I thought, I thought long and hard about the studio not being here for me anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought long and hard about all the, you know, the record stores that I came up going to, um, you know, the bars that I grew up playing that went out of business and they weren't around. And, you know, I, I wasn't really old enough and responsible enough and, you know, whatever enough back then to really do anything about all that, you know, but I was like, you know, I, I can do something about this, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, Bronson, my partner was already there, you know, working as an engineer and we came up with a plan to buy it from Bruce. Uh, yeah. So here we are, you know, almost four years later. Uh -huh. Now, as know. far as, as now you got the studio now, I, I don't even know how Paul got a hold of you guys to do, uh, his record. It turned out great. And, but mm -hmm. for other bands that are cycling through, um, how can they find you if they want to go ahead and go, uh, you know, have dial back sound? see if you'd be interested in producing their album. How do they get a hold of you? Yeah, we can, you know, we're at dialbacksound.com, um, you know, and there's contact information there. Um, and we really like to cater to the touring bands. There's an apartment that's no extra charge in the back. They can all stay. Um, we keep rates really cheap, you know, for the bands that are like, like the legals, legals that we met along the way. They just needed to, uh, you know, 
a place that had a great vibe and a great sound that was affordable, you know, and uh, they found us luckily, you know, and that's, that's sort of why we're here. You know, it's, it's not really, you know, for the, for this sort of vanity project thing. It's, it's for working bands that are touring, you know, um, yeah. we want to help them. You know, it's like, we know if they, if they're going out and working hard, that they're worth investing in, you know, work, worth you know putting your time towards because they can carry your name forward you know and we want to support anybody that's out there you know yeah. working hard and, and you guys you guys are in mississippi what part of mississippi we're in the north north hill country part we're about 20 minutes south of uh oxford mississippi uh where the university of mississippi is and about an hour or so north of Me- uh, uh, south of memphis yeah all right hey paul you got anything uh else for uh for matt here no i'm just thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to do this and i i hope you keep staying safe, safe with your family out there man absolutely hope you all are staying safe you take yeah. care of my friend it's good to it's, right, good, it's good it's, it's good to hear you in this way and uh just hear a little bit behind the scenes there that's cool man absolutely yeah. thank you sandy appreciate it all right hey, thanks all thanks right. for being on uh, west coast well, ramble we'll talk to you later matt thank you Thanks, Matt. Bye-bye. Cheers, man. Thanks. Okay. Well, that was, that was that was a nice guest, Paul. Thanks for bringing him on. You know, he's like a legitimate yeah. uh, studio owner. Yeah, I respect <clears throat> Matt, you know, a lot. So I'm glad he made time for this. Yeah. So on a side note really quick, I want to say happy birthday to John Kavine. I think he might be watching live right now, but uh, it was cool for him to be joining us like, two weeks in a row. Happy who, birthday. Who's, who, who's this John Kavine you're talking about? He is the bassist of my band, The Illegals, and uh, he's actually <clears throat> he's also toured with Jimbo Mathis recently and uh, plays with all kinds of people, to be honest. So he's one of the best. Well, it's funny you say that because John Kavine just said, fantastic studio. These guys will make your record sound legit. Talking about he knows. Back sound. Yeah, he oh, does. he knows. OK, well, friends, let's see. Oh, we got a couple other things going on. Here's what I wanted to sh- uh, share with you. I was digging through my closet. I thought I might do a little show and tell. And um, let's see. Take a look at this. There we go. What do you got look at there? That. If you could see, that is my good friend, uh, Big Sandy. But look at the hair on that dude. I can't see it from here. But Oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, well, you, oh. could, you, you could comment and share that as well. But uh, now here's what Robert looks like now. This is what he looks like. Let's compare. <laughs> There's Robert. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thought that may be a little bit of fun. Okay. Oh, and Share one, if you agree. Yeah. <laughs> Share if you agree on that one. Now, friends, we West Coast Ramble actually started out as a podcast with my good friend Jeff West, who used to play bass with this guy, Big Sandy. But he doesn't anymore because his hand went bad, and so now he just sits in his backyard and gardens, and he's quite a gardener. <laughs> yeah. But hey, but Jeff West also has a band called Jeff West in the Whitwoods. Check them out. Hey, man. Yeah, good band. Oh, hey, there's so any. Hey, so uh, let's see. What am I going to do? I'm going to call Jeff right now. He has a couple things he wanted to share with us. Uh, hey, Big Sandy, while I'm dialing up, up can you uh, please uh, entertain the people? I'll take a, a little dialing music. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, Sh- Paul Schaefer, how about a little dialing music? Well, anyway, hey, uh, we got. I'll read some comments here. We got Brittany Bell says, oh, baby Robert. Uh, my cousin, uh, uh, Freddie, says, I know that young buck, you know, when he held up the picture. Uh, what else? We got Abby says, uh, happy birthday, King of the North. Johnny Kavin says, you should have. I don't, I don't know that's in response to. Anyway, uh, oh, Ab- Amber's standing by. Oh, you got <laughs> Jeff on the line. Hi, Ted. <clears throat> you are. Uh, I'm not buying it. Hey, no, <laughs> Jeff. Huh? Jeff, it's us. Oh, it's Tom, us from the show. Tom, yeah. hi. It's yeah. West Coast Ramble. Yeah, that's right. All right. Say, say, Hi, everybody. Yeah, say hello to my good friend, um, Big Sandy. He's waving. Hi, Big Sandy. Yeah. Hi. I'm waving Hi. here, too, in my cave in Whittier. Yeah, and then I got Pope, Pope Paul. Hi, Paul. Yeah, and he actually shaved a little bit. You can tell it's like only like a 5 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> geez, I got about 720 here. <laughs> Anyway, so, that's West Coast. Yeah. Hey. So, anyways, that's friends. A West joke too. <laughs> you you might be wondering why I'm on the cell phone with him because Jeff has a flip phone. He doesn't have a computer. He doesn't have anything like that. 
He's... I flip it off regularly too. I, you know. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, you're. Uh, so Jeff, you you had a you were going to share something with the people. Please share. I was I was uh, before I forget this this is to you, my co-host Tom. Uh, uh, has, did, did Red's Robber? You remember when I, uh, we got that letter from Red's Robberger a couple weeks ago? Yeah, Red's uh, Red's Robberger. Th this place. Yeah. Okay. Well, did they call you up yet? Because they were uh, asking about. They were really interested in being a regular sponsor. Uh, after all this plague stuff is behind us and we're back in the same room again. Uh, I, I thought that was great. They, they, they were up for it. So, uh, I don't know if they got a hold of you, but, uh, they're interested. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all for Red's raw burgers sponsoring the show. We Me could, too. I don't understand what the burger is. It doesn't look that appealing. Yeah. It's, yeah they, I know. And then this whole raw deal thing, but I, I, I'm just glad to have a sponsor. So. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll get through all that, but, uh, yeah, I, I I had a few. Uh, I had some reaction from uh, some since two weeks ago. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't do last week, and I appreciate this like high tech look up here. Uh, yeah, at least I'm not completely cut out of the loop, so that's great. Yeah, uh, this... I'm doing fine, by the way. In case anyone's interested. <laughs> yeah, and you have a garden. Uh, you have a garden with fresh vegetables and stuff. Could you please tell us your address so we can please raid your garden? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you just buy the new CD, it's Janison Square Garden, or you can get it online, too. I think they call that thing dropped. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's the way the kids say it. Uh, yeah. But we did get some, we got some feedback. Uh, do you want to hear those? Or, yeah, yeah, t tell me who, who, okay. who called in. Okay, we got, uh, this is from Dawn Clydesdale. It's a she, D-A-W-N. She's a hoofer, a dancer from St. Louis, Missouri. Hi guys, thought the new visual West Coast Ramble was great. Maybe you could have pictures of some of your viewers like they used to do on local horror host letters portion. Yeah, I know what she means. They, kids would send their school pictures. But that's a good idea. Uh, I could send one as soon as I get my overbite fixed. <laughs> <You're> sure. <laughs> uh, like that you guys are still providing entertainment when it's so badly needed. Keep a stiff upper and never be sadder but wiser. Ah. It must be a it must be a St. Louis joke. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. okay, I, this is an interesting one. Uh, um, this is from anonymous Bosch. He's a retired spark plug dealer from Orson Wells, California. <laughs> I think that's near Palm Springs. Anyway, uh, to hell with this damn pandemic. Could be some kind of hoax, like that Martian thing in the thirties. I think he's talking about War of the Worlds, uh, the radio. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine right here in my bunker. Always have been. Just a little low on paper products. Long time listener, now a viewer. Like the music and guess. Hell, I've been in this bunker since the 50s. <laughs> uh, I bet he has. No, I, I, that's actually not too far away from me. But And, and this, uh, this is interesting. It's the final one. Uh, this is from Detective Ion Fleming. Uh, NYPD in New York City. Uh, been listening now, been listening and now viewing West Coast Ramble. In my spare time, I'm an aspiring television writer. I've pitched a few scripts, mostly crime drama stuff. You write what you know. Another cop I work with in the precinct who plays bass, uh, he, well, he inspired this idea. It's another entry, uh, in the series of Law and Order, you know how they have a Law and Order, uh, you know, SVU and S, you oh, know, yeah. a lot yeah. of Law and Order, uh, yeah. Criminal Intent. Okay, this is his pitch uh, for a new idea. Uh, in the criminal justice system, there are crimes that only involve base amplification system. These are especially <laughs> heinous since this stuff is so damned expensive. <laughs> Law and Order SVT. What do you think? I don't know. Is it too... Is, he, he says, "Is it too small of an audience frame?" Well, I liked I liked it, but uh, yeah, yeah, that could be. Yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I say pitch it to, to Peter Wolf anyway, or uh, isn't that his name, Peter Wolf? Yeah, Peter Wolf or Rod yeah. Serling, yeah. the guys that you grew yeah. up with. <laughs> okay, and then uh, I just had some tips for. Uh, I know everyone's housebound now, so these are some movies you may not want to enjoy while housebound. 
with the entire family. Uh, Stephen King's The Stand. Okay. Uh, uh, Last Man on Earth, which is based on <laughs> Richard Mathis and I Am Legend. Uh, the Andromeda Strain. Yeah. The Day the World Ended. Mask of the Red Death. Now, now I like all of these. And I like this kind of stuff, but I'm just saying it might not be, you know, really family-oriented uh, during these times. But, you know, I've just been watching The Stooges to stay up, so uh, uh, that, I say I recommend Stooges. That, that kind of cuts all the barriers. Yeah. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, <laughs> I'm doing okay, but I did have sort of a nightmare to do with all this stuff the other night. And what was it? Well, well, well it had to do with toilet paper. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> used toilet paper. Uh, it was in my favorite color, though. So, stay well, everybody. And I really look forward to interacting and being in the same room with all you guys again. And, uh, you know, we'll get through this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Hey, man, thanks for calling right. in, and uh, we'll we'll get you in next week somehow. Maybe I could have you just sit in in your car, and I'll run a camera out to you out in my driveway. Okay. Well, I hope this lightens up soon, and uh, and you called me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, That's Jeff. true. Yeah. Okay. All right, Jeff. Stay well, everybody. All right, Jeff. We'll talk to you in, later. In mind, in mind, and body. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Robert, we're on you now. That was Jeff West. Remember him? I certainly do. Yes. Yeah. Okay, friends. You know what? Now it's, let's see, it's 731 right now. We've got to move along right now. Moving and, uh, along. Yeah. Hey, hey, Paul, you racked up our next guest yet? I have. I think she's joining right about now. Now, okay. this is going to be fun. Okay. Uh, why, Robert? What's going to, uh, excuse me, why, Big Sandy? What's going to happen? Well, uh, because I know this person, and I know she's a believer in fun, and she brings fun Got to it. everything she's ever involved with. Yeah. And she, uh, oh, there's Bob. Okay. <laughs> hold, hold on, it's, it's coming up yet. It's not on my, it's not on my system yet, friends. Hold on, hold on. Amber's in her kitchen right now. I can see her. You can't. Yeah. Ray and party. Someone's in the kitchen with Amber. Let's all sing. <laughs> Hey, yep. tell them about the time we set off fireworks in our kitchen, my kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Hey, <laughs> if, well, let's start this off original, uh, uh, the way we're supposed to, like on real television terms. <laughs> terms. Let's say hello. Let's say hello to Amber Fox. Hello, Amber Fox. What's up, you guys? How you doing? It's been a while. I'm yeah. eager to communicate with people. You know, I'm a little social. If you didn't know that, for all you people. <laughs> Well, Am Amber, please tell the folks what room you are in your house and just tell them the fact that every room in your house is decorated just as delightfully as this one. Oh, how kind. That's so sweet of you, Tom. Eh? We are in my kitchen at the moment. and uh, Really? You know, we, we have a sink. It's pretty cool. Um, we're hoarding food probably like everybody else. This is actually a whirlpool, you guys. You can get a Whirlpool vintage-like uh, refrigerator these days. This is a, from Sears. You can, buy, you can buy cool stuff from Sears these days, too. I mean, you've always been able to, but um, whatever questions you have about my kitchen, because okay. I, I mean, I could go on and on and on. I mean, I have, I, I have amazing things I could show you. Yeah, well, hold on a second, Amber. I, 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 I want to look. I've Obviously, you've got all the appliances and stuff. You will blow everyone's mind if you pull some vintage baking soda off the shelf or something. Didn't you have like a little baking cheese maker powder? thing too? A little cheese? I have lard. Hey, Bob, show them the lard. I have vintage lard. <laughs> What'd you call me? <laughs> What'd you call me? Bob, I have some very special things. And let me know if anybody's asking questions because I can answer all the questions about the cheese pixies. Bob, come here. Let's talk about cheese pixies. You guys, we everybody needs these. I mean, look at them. You 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 cut pieces of cheese and you put them on these and then you serve them to your guests. I I collect them and I love them. Are you guys seriously like freaking out right now? Because I am. I am. <laughs> 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 okay. Abby, Charles, Abby's. Oh, go ahead. What's that? Abby has a question. Uh, Abby says, "How fun was your new cleaning power tool?" Oh, you saw that. 
Um, I have a, a friend, Addie, who sent me some cool, like, little power tools that you put on um, a drill, and you can you can scrub everything with it. So, you know, we have some extra time on our hands, so that's what I've been doing. Well, well except the eye irritation. Oh, yeah. The next day, I was like, Bob, do I have this thing, this viral thing happening? Because my eyes, like, are killing me. <laughs> and it was like all the chemicals in this thing I was using <laughs> Anyway, long story short, I'm okay. I'm good. Um, but here's another. Oh yeah. So Charles Phoenix got this for me for my birthday, and it's really cute. It's like a little cottage cheese container. But then inside he had a little worm. Like that's so weird. It's a little little worm no. candle. I know. Hey, hey Amber, I know that you guys do. You're in a band called uh, mm -hmm. Amber Fox, right? And um, you guys record, and you, in fact, you were supposed to record last weekend or the weekend before everything kind of blew up, and you record in your house. Can you please show the people where you go to sing and where Mr. Balls sit, sets up his Ooh. drum set? I love that you call it Mr. Balls. <laughs> I'm so happy about that because we were debating going, like, is it Chris Sprague or is it Sugar Balls or is it just Balls? And I was like, no, his name's Balls. I mean, like, that's, that's it. Um, so this is. This is where we, we record, you guys. The acoustics in this 1938 house, it's a Depression-era home, is, is amazing. Um, so we usually set up in here. You know, we got Chris Sprague over here, Bob in the kitchen, Amber's over there in the corner. Um, so, yeah, we were supposed to record last week, and I'm super bummed because uh, Chris Sprague is moving as we know, to New York. Um, so we're going to have to fly him back to do some recording. I know Tommy Harkenreiter, my guitar player, is super bummed out too because we had some like really special stuff we were going to start recording. But stay tuned, guys. We'll get it done. That pesky virus. No. I'm so irritated, you guys. Not being able to get everybody in a room. Yeah. Hey, Amber, I got, I got a question. Um, oh, let's... Bob, could you go back to the TV I noticed? And please talk TV. about this the TV that you have. That that's not a big screen that you get over there at um, at Best Buy, is it? It and you and they don't play that. Where where are you looped in where you can get Ranch Party? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh what? <laughs> so this is a reproduction from the '90s, actually, and we found it in Palm Springs and. Bob spent his whole bonus check on it. So we, we, we were, we, this is very special to us. Uh, they don't make them anymore. Uh, but yeah, you can connect anything to it. And so, yeah, we're watching YouTube, you guys. We were watching some Netflix today on it. It's pretty badass. You watch porn on there? This is a family <laughs> show. <Sandy>. Family. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What about the Seabird? Do you guys have questions about the Seabird or anything? I don't really oh, know what it. That. I don't, I don't know, know what it is, Amber. Can you please tell us what the Seabird 1000 is? So think of like Muzak. So you're at uh, I don't know Buffums in the 60s or what are some of the older department stores? This Broadway. is what Broadway, the Broadway. Yeah, this is what they would use for their Muzak throughout the company. So we bought this um, and it's very special to me. In fact. I need everybody to go on to Seabird 1000 and there is an actual app that you can, is it an app Bob or is it a website? Just the website. Even. You can listen to it. It's all like really cool, like elevator music. So think of fifties and sixties elevator music. This is it. They're really yeah. hard to find. So pretty badass. Yeah. Hey, Amber, on the way to your what's closet, well, can you tell us uh, what's a really good Ameripolitan story you had? Because I know you were out there for the Ameripolitan weekend, right? You were nominated. Oh, dang. She can't I know, it was so long ago. <laughs> what's that, Big Sandy? I mean, Big Sandy was there. We had a lot of fun, you guys. We got like, to see him at Hernando's Hideaway, which is fun. Oh, that, yeah. It's really interesting because the entire, you know, you wake up at, like, two in the afternoon and like, you do the whole thing over and over. I would highly recommend everybody going. Uh, but the best story, Bob, I I can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> Playing on Beale Street, out oh, yeah. church. I played Beale Street. Yeah, that was probably the best show I think I've ever played, actually. I had so much fun. Everybody was packed in there. 
Susan, are you on? Susan said it was one of my best shows. It was pretty rad. So awesome. Yeah, yeah. Amber, I'm sure I have so many more stories, but Amber, oh, can, you, okay, can you please? Can you please tell the folks about the record, uh, the 45 holder, the, what is that called? A carousel or thing? Yeah, I found this at the orange circle when you're, and it's seriously, you're supposed to spin it and the, the records aren't supposed to move, but guess what? They move because I've had some kids in my house and they've spun it. And these are all my grandpa's records that, that, that my aunt gave me. And so there were some on the ground broken. So Kids aren't allowed in my house anymore because of that. FYI, just just kidding. But really, yeah. <laughs> um, but one really cool fact about my grandpa, you guys, he was born in um, Acme, North Carolina, right? That's awesome. Southern dude. He was. Uh, he did a lot of uh, uh, um, hillbilly music and, and all that kind of stuff, bluegrass, and and we get all of his records, and there's screaming Jay Hawkins in here. <laughs> Which is super cool. I'm um, 78. Yeah, and he had a he had the Collins kids in there, but he was <clears throat> really a blue bluegrass guy. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. My grandpa Brad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, Amber, if if we could move on to the creme de la creme, which is your makeup room and um, the closet. Uh, Oh, is it the closet? Is that what it's called, Robert? Uh, or Big Santa? Didn't know. I'm sorry. I thought it was a makeup room. Well, I say that because people are requesting to see that room. It's a much fabled. Uh, it's a legendary mytho. There's a certain mythology about that that room there. You got it. Oh, Let me just go ahead and set my my quick little cocktail that Bong made me. Oh, that's so good. By the way, Bob is making coaster now. Everybody, so if you, you want some cool coaster. Very nice. Uh, hey, what's that? Can, can Bob show himself in the mirror? I'm tired of not. We talked about this, Bob, and I don't know who he is. What is he oh wearing? Bob? No, no, Bob. No, we have to show how rad you are right now. Yeah, show. By Bob. the way, we always wear this stuff this in is, our house. This yeah, go just, that way, Bob. There this we go. Is just Saturday night. This is how Bob. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's what you do, right? What do you mean? What the hell? This is what Bob wears every day. Yeah, this is just how I wake up. And as you guys know, this is what I wear every day, right? <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, Bob. Last Bob? night we did a test with a hoodie. What's that? What's Robert? that? What do you say? Can we see if the rumors are true, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> what rumors Family are you talking stuff. about, Big Sandy? Oh, about the room, the the closet. Yeah, the rumors of the room. The room rumors. All right, the room rumors. All right, I gotta tell the story. Here's the thing, you guys. This is a 1938 house. My closet was this big. You could fit maybe like four or five pieces of clothing in there and I don't know, three pairs of shoes. That wasn't gonna happen. I visited the Max Factor Museum over uh, in Hollywood. Now it's called the Hollywood Museum. And all of a sudden, we built thick out of our garage. Whoa! Anyway, oh. I feel like there's just spikes. That's pretty crazy, right? I have props. Oh my gosh, that's. Oh, oh, what, what oh, was that? A smoking? What is that thing? I found it at a in a street sale up in the desert with my little brother. It's like one of those smoking things. It's kind of badass. You put a cigarette on the end. Yeah. <laughs> this is where I get ready every day, you guys. This is uh, I, I'm I'm infatuated with beauty products. I love beauty. Beauty is what makes women beautiful, correct? Hair, makeup. So um, I collect everything. Bob, show my stuff. We could do a whole hour on my collection of weird stuff, but I go all over the world and I just buy stuff. I love. All the hair products. So, this is my pink room, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed the tour of the Fox House, and I'm hoping uh, to go and play some music with you guys next time, right, Tom? Yes, Amber Fox. When this whole thing blows over, and it will, I'd like you to come okay. into the West Coast Ramble Studios and play some music for the people. I, I should hope so. You know, Tom was my first guitar player, you guys, for Amber Fox. 
And uh, he wrote a lot of my, uh, the first album we did, all of the music. And uh, so I appreciate you, Tom. Yeah. Well, thank you. That that was Amber Fox before you went commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Super commercial. I'm joking, Amber. You guys are, I, I, you know, Amber, playing with you guys, you took, you. we got to play all over, we got to go to Green Bay, play that festival, got to go to, uh, to Europe and played over there. Yeah, yeah, that was, man, what a. Yeah, with Shorty Pool, Mr. Shorty, you were yeah. on there. In Shorty the, Pool? The steel yeah, yeah, uh, good times. All right. Good well, times. It, well, thank you, friends. Let's say, uh, you got any last th uh, questions for Amber, friends, before we let her go? Robert? No questions. Come on. I just want to say that I'm looking forward to the next time we can hang out together and uh, maybe share the microphone and sing sing another song together, Amber. I miss you very much. What do we want? What should we sing? If I could be, be with, with you, I'd love you long. If I could be with you, I'd love you long. Me and Robert love to do uh, our big Sandy. We love to do rock steady, don't we? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. right, Amber. We're going to say Thanks, goodbye. Amber. Thank you very much for the tour, man. It was great. But I could talk to you for like another hour, FYI. I'm just saying. That'll be with Scramble okay. okay. on another episode. Bye, Amber. Yeah, well, we'll see you later. Okay. Well, that was Amber Fox. And uh, we could all smack a hand for her virtually. Uh, and uh, hey, Paul. Yes, sir. At this point, you get to rack up our next guest. And at the meantime, there he oh is. my goodness! I just I, just I wanted joined us. In the meantime, we just got a donation. And don't forget about those uh, donations at the bottom of the page there, because everybody could use a little help. Little Larry Phillips from Attica just donated two dollars. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. Thank you, little Larry Phillips. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, and uh, let's see. I'm trying. Oh, there. Wrong. Oh, wrong camera. Yeah. And then we did get another uh, big. Uh, this person doesn't want to shout out, but you you know who you are, and thank you very much for that. That's real. That's very kind. More than deserving. So, the person that we will say unnamed gave us a really nice donation. Thank you very much. Awesome. You know, um, one little small world story I can tell about our next guest is. Uh, a Nashville boogie about two years ago, uh, we were filming a bot flicks session. And if you're not familiar with bot flicks, I would say you should check that out on Facebook. Our good friend, Chris McGee over from the uh, UK puts those together. But, uh, we were doing a session where it was my band, the illegals, uh, actually the high jivers who will be on the show next week. And, uh, this young man did his own, a session with Bob Flicks that same day at the Vinyl Bunker during the Nashville Boogie, and it's uh, Mr. McKinley James. And I think I don't think his camera's on yet. If you want to please turn your camera on, sir. And I think you're just about to join us live. Yeah, we're 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 waiting for it. So, oh, there he is, there you McKinley go. James. Hey, there he is, McKinley James. How oh. you doing, young blood? He's freezing a little bit. There. It's a good pose, though. If one is going to freeze up on the screen, that's a, oh, there he is. There he is. There <laughs> we go. Hey, Mickey James, thank you so much for being Everybody. on West Coast Ramble. Big fan. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. Hey. Uh. So tell me first off, for people that don't know who you are, I, I, I'm sorry, I got to do this. How old are you? Where are you living? And how how did you learn to play guitar like that for being a young dude? Well, um. Uh, eight, I, I turned 19 in August. I'm 18 now. I am originally from upstate New York, Rochester area. And um, I live in Nashville now. Um, I'm coming on almost four years in September. And um, I think we well, just listen to old records all the time. Uh, and just like a ton of stuff, wide range from like traditional blues music to like up until like late 70s soul music, all that like stacks motown chess records cobra record like all that kind of stuff all the time just like constantly listening to it yeah and uh and uh so and, and also we are we're we're friends with uh, tk smith 
And, you know, we've been out there before, and that's the first time I actually met you. You, you don't know that. We saw J.D. McPherson over there at Pappy and Harriet's, and you were hanging out over there. And T.K. Smith said sometimes you go hang out with him. He's also, a, you know, an awesome luthier, great picker. What happens oh, when you totally. go out there? So I know, but I used to go, um, it was a couple summers ago, and I went two summers in a row. Right after, like, school, I would fly out there maybe, like, a week or two after. And it would be for about a month, and we would hang out every day. And, like, we would go to the shop kind of, like, in the morning and then come home for lunch and pick and talk about, stuff, you know, just guitar stuff constantly and then go back to work, right, you know, after noon-ish and then come back to the house around 5, 6 after working and then just have some dinner and just play, like, till like we got tired and then it was just like a constant rotation of that and i helped out in the shop a little bit and he's just like really he's like somebody that just does something perfect like there's no like oh you know i got this guitar from him and you know like, oh, i wish it had this like it's like there's none of that like it's always like there's nothing bad to say anything about any you know his work and stuff like that he's just like always perfect yeah, that's true. And then, um, hey, McKinley, uh, you were you going to play a song for us? Is, is that true? Were you going to play a song for yeah. us, sir? Yeah, we can do that. I, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I would love to see that. But before you do that, Mr. McKinley James, can you please turn your camera this way? Kind of, yeah. Or, God, lie just, in, or lie in your side. <laughs> can, can you... Can you flip your camera long ways so we can see you and the particular oh, guitar you're going to be playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Here. If you can. Prop this up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see here. You know, another actually... thing, uh, McKinley's played drums for the High Jivers a few times. Oh. Um, and they, like I said, they'll be on with us next week. Is that better? There you go. Yes, sir. I love and there's a drum set behind you? You got it. Yeah. Oh, what does that mean? Uh, we'll do a duo here. See, just make sure this doesn't fall. All right. All right. Sweet. All right. I, I'm pretty much excited. I'm ready for this one, sir. Let's see. There's McKinley James. He's walking back. He's getting his... Wait, who's that in the back? Nobody. <laughs> it looks like Jesus. You ready? Yeah. Hey, it's old Smay. Hey. <laughs> Team B. Can you see everything? Yeah, we can see. It looks great. Perfect. All right, we're going to play. All right, we're going to do a, a tune uh, we just released a little while ago by a uh, guy, uh, Smokey Smothers. A tune, uh, uh, Got My Eyes on You. Yeah. 
James, you know, we only have a little bit of time, so we could either talk to you or you could knock out one other song. No matter me. You're, You're good, man. You, you got a 90 second, a, a two minute, uh, something you could pop out for us, because I love it. I, whatever you can do for us. Give us a two minute song. Sure. Do it. Uh, we're going to do uh, a tune we did uh, on our first Botflex video. Actually, this relates to that uh, when I first met uh, Pope Paul. Hell yeah, man. Cool.
now on you. Well, now, baby, you gotta find someone new. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, thank yes. you so much. Now, yeah. I talk, McKinley, this is a big Sandy yeah. talking, by the way. It's hard for me to completely process in my this whole thing, what I'm witnessing <laughs> here in my mind. Because, man, I remember we were just like a little, tiny little kid, man. And I, I, I've been fortunate, I was fortunate enough to go over to your house when uh, all, all you you and your brothers were, were just, were just so young. And, uh, this it's just a, a, an amazing thing to see happen, and uh, what you become is just a great thing. At first, at first, it was like, oh, how cute! My 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 buddy's friend is playing music, and then it got like really good. And so, this is an an awesome thing, man. I really dig what you're well, doing. And so you. many so many other people dig it, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hey, McKinley James, I when next time you come over to Southern California. If we get our studio done, we're not too far from TK's place. Could I get you to come in here and play live for us in the studio? I think that would be fun. Yes, sir. We we'll set it up then. I'll I'll bug you once a week. Oh, cool, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, and for pe- and for people that want to know where you can find McKinley James, you got a website or do we where do we find your stuff? I lost him. Oh, lost him? I'm so sorry. He said I'm outy. He said, I'm out. <laughs> no, no, nobody says that anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. We got hey. Andrew standing by. The, I'm so I, I didn't realize that he just, we dropped him. Okay. That's all right. Well, anyways, well, friends, McKinley James, I'm sure you could find him. You probably know better than I do on how to find him online, but that's the kid. His dad, Jason Smay plays with uh, high drivers and uh, JD McPherson. So he comes from good stock. So anyways, Hey Paul. So uh, let's see, we're, we're trying to get up. Andrew from the Delta He's Bombers. He's there. Uh, oh, oh, and, 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 and McKinley. Oh, wait, Did wait, we wait, wait. connected there? Hold on. We got you back, McKinley. You still there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Okay. Before we lost you, where where can people find you? Uh, you can go uh, on Spotify, iTunes, like all the streaming services. We kind of put stuff up kind of regularly. And um, you can go to my website, uh, McKinleyJames.com. And the, um, I think, and the... Um, Instagram, Facebook. I met. I'm mainly. I'm on both for sure, but I'm mainly on like Instagram, and uh, you can check those couple places out. And like I said, like Spotify, we kind of do like recent stuff. We kind of just keep updating that with new material and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Hey, man. Well, well, thanks, McKinley James. And thanks we'll so much for having next time, me. man. Thank you so much. Thank thanks, man. All right. All right. So I think uh, we have Andrew lining up here, and uh, he is the guitarist from the Delta Bombers. What's and, up, guys? Uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the and time to do this. All right, is he lined up, Tom? Yeah. McKinley is- James is more than welcome to have my time. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Okay, so uh, give us a – Paul – just tell yes, sir. quickly, in a nutshell, who are the Delta Bombers for anyone who isn't who doesn't know who they are, which is not a lot of people. Everyone seems to know who they are right now. They're kind of the hot band. Man, the Delta Bombers are just a badass band off of Wild Records. And uh, first time we came across them, we got to open a show for them in New Orleans, believe it or not, because these guys are touring harder than anybody out there. And I mean, they just they're just a really good show. They they really just know how to bring a great energy andrew knows you know another thing that's awesome about andrew a lot of people don't know is he's all over like the rhythm shakers he's all over a lot of wild records guitar as a lead guitar player but as combined with the delta bombers it's just a whole nother level of just rock and roll you know they're they're influenced by like ccr and like and rockabilly and all this other old stuff so just just a great band yeah just rock and roll baby that's all you can say Hey, Paul, yeah. do you remember how, how how many people were at that New Orleans show? <laughs> like three. <laughs> yeah, it was like three people. 
<laughs> and, you know, I'm going to tell you this. You know, they're a huge band. And that night, they gave us their pay because, like, they're just, they know what it's like to be a struggling band. And they also, and they deserve to be where they are as, like, a great headliner and a great opening band. They tour all the time with Reverend Horton Heat. And they also, you know, like I said, headliners themselves, they bring it, man. Yeah. So, uh, to, Andrew, what, what, are, what are concerts like now for Delta Bombers? I, you know, it looks like you have huge crowds and you're playing in bigger venues. What's going on with Delta Bombers right now? We're doing pretty good, man. We toured ourselves silly and it's finally paying off. Uh, I think we spent just enough time in the van to draw decent crowds uh, wherever we go. For the longest time, we had no draw in the USA. We only had a draw in Europe, um, thanks to the festivals that we've gone on out there. But at some point, things started to click over in the USA, and now things are going great. Um, we get a few hundred people in each room, and that's that's all you really need to keep going. Yeah, yeah. And I, I notice, uh, am I wrong, but you guys are with uh, the Horton Heat on uh, his tour? You're, you're doing a couple days with him? Um, no, last year we we did a, a ton of dates with Reverend Horton Heat and Mr. Big Sandy. Uh, one special tour was uh, Big Sandy, Voodoo Glow Skulls, and uh, the Delta Bombers. That, that was, was a awesome. Good yeah, we played uh, probably 150 or maybe 120 shows with them last year. And um, this year, uh, we were supposed to go to England with them uh, for two weeks. But, of course, we all know what happened with the virus uh, nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense, but, you know, the virus craziness. So that got pushed back. But uh, we, we will we will connect again. Yeah, yeah. Well, what did you guys uh, have? Did you guys... Uh have stuff lined up i assume you did before this whole thing started and what's going to happen when it's over you guys going to get back out on the road or start working on new material what are you doing we had a ton of dates lined up man uh we probably canceled um i don't know 60 shows or not canceled just pushed them back um and we were just about to go on tour so uh it kind of sucked you know to get those paychecks kind of snatched from you but uh we have postponed everything um we're trying to start the dates over in june like late june that may or may not happen. It just depends on what the health situation is. I'm sure lots of bands are trying to do this. We're prepared to postpone more shows if if if, uh, if we have to. Right now, um, we're putting together a live stream show on April 11th. I believe that's Saturday. We're going to be live streaming from a venue here in Las Vegas. It's going to be completely empty, save for the band and a camera. And uh, we're just about to announce that. So you heard it here first. April 11th, yeah. We'll make sure all these details from all of the uh, guests tonight are, are up on the West Coast Ramble uh, Facebook page and and on the website as well. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And so, and uh, Andrew, what are you, are you the merch guy in your band? Because look, if I look behind you, you got this stuff all <laughs> over. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I'm I'm the wares proprietor. You know, this is our warehouse, and uh, I was stocking up for a big European tour. You know, we ordered well over a thousand T-shirts. And we got utter stockpiles of 45s and um, just all kinds of nonsense, pomade, shot glasses. And we had really, uh, we'd bought a ton of stuff and now we can't go. So I've been hitting the merchandise game pretty hard trying to sell some of it so we can make our money back. Uh, we also bought flights too, which is a, which is a real crapper. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah. All right. So, hey, if anyone needs any, uh, if you need a shirt, you know, if you need a, a Corona COVID-19, uh, <laughs> to make you feel better, go get yourself a shirt. from. We, we just lost 50 viewers right now. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Tom. <laughs> My fiance has like like four Delta Bomber shirts, man. Yeah. No, they're, <laughs> Thank they're you. Pretty cool. Thank you very much. Now, uh, now, I see that you got your guitar with you. Would you mind playing a couple licks, man? I'd, I'd like to hear your style because we got all sorts of different guitar players on this show. And I'd like to hear what you bring to the table because it's it's a little different. And I dig it though; it's it's a good style. Yeah, for sure, man. I'm gonna play you something I've been kind of uh, riffing on uh, Ronnie Dawson a whole lot lately. So I'm just gonna play you a 30 second snippet of Ronnie Dawson until I lose Big Sandy. All right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> huh? well, he's got Kingman. I mean, come on, you can't listen to me with Kingman. Uh, no, I love. I, we right, both. Right. We uh, and <laughs> listen, Himmler. We both love what you do. Totally. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> 
<laughs> Yo, Andrew, let me ask you this really quick. You know, this is like a guitar nerd question. Yeah. What do you? What are the some of the advantage? I know sometimes you have like drop. You drop way down, like maybe a whole step down for some of those songs, right? Yeah. What do you what, like? Just what's your whole? What What do you get from that? What's the attitude of wanting to do that? I love it. It sounds great, and not a lot of people do it. So we, tell we me play, something about we that. We play all the time in E flat, so we're always down a half step. We did that first off because Chris's voice was dropping when we first wrote our songs. Chris had a very high pitched kind of teenage voice, and then all of a sudden we were playing the same songs and. He got a little older, and his voice kind of naturally deepened, so we just kind of dropped everything down a half step. And then sometimes I still play in drop D. Um, for certain songs, I'll like drop tune the whole guitar to C or something like that. But I don't usually do that with, with the Delta Bombers. Um, uh, this is something that we did with the uh, with the Rhythm Shakers. This is just like an open open D. Yeah, you know, I really. I love the stuff you did with that, Rhythm um, Shakers. It's not something that happens in Rockabilly too much, you know? It's just fun to mix that in. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, what would you consider the style the Delta Bombers? What kind of style are you? Uh, I mean, these days I've just been calling it um, an Americana meat grinder. You know, we, we started off pure rockabilly, and then we mixed in blues. We delved into garage. Um, now we're, we're deep into our CCR and country. We love um, Hank, all, all three Hank Williams, Waylon Jennings, and we just try to... Um, we love I mean we love we love them we love everything so we just try to mix it up as much as we can and mix uh, rock and roll milkshake you know yeah yeah you do well, man you guys do uh, Andrew I could say this is a good example for uh, other bands because you came out of the rockabilly world but the more that you've branched out and the more that you've kind of reached uh, uh, for your own thing and, and taken in other influences you've you've come up with your own thing the popularity has risen. So I think it's a good example for other bands. Do your own thing. And if you're good at it, and if you work hard, people will follow you. Hey, Big Sandy, I, I, I think you bring up a good point, man. I think um, when a band is passionate about their music, it really shows. Um, and I think a band shouldn't be afraid to kind of branch out and just play what they want to play. And if it happens yeah. to gravitate and move along as time goes on, I think that happens to every band, no matter who you are. It happened to your band, you know, in, in a very, very good way. You know, you start off playing one thing and then you move on to the next thing and the next thing. And they all, they all tie together anyway. Yeah. And I just yeah. noticed you, you, have a, you have a really cute dimple there. <laughs> I, was born with it. I was born this way. <laughs> all right. Oh, yeah, man. So uh, let's see. What else, what else have we got for Andrew Himmler out there in Las Vegas? Well, what's going on with uh, with uh, you guys, man? How, how long have you guys been doing this show for? You should tell people. Well, thank you for asking, Andrew Himmler. <laughs> Actually, this is our this is our uh, third. No, this is our second Skype show because of the situation okay. that's going on. But we're kind of set up to where we'd like to have bands come in here, and uh, uh, we're kind of on a low budget. But would Delta Bombers come in here and do four songs in our studio when this is over for fifty bucks? No, fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Keep adding zeros until I say yes. No, I'm just saying. Of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, of course we will. No, nah, man. They're good guys, dude. They're the people's band. And, uh, you know, like, I don't want to, like, get too much on a rant here. But, you know, it's hard for the illegals to get shows sometimes. But Andrew, he goes out of his way to insist, hey, we want these guys to open for us on this show. We want these guys to open for us on this show, you know. So I know he does that for a lot of people too. So it's great to know that people coming up support oh, Paul, all the bands, awesome. man. You know, I was just talking to him. Excuse me, I have a stutter. I was just talking to McKinley James uh, last week, and he wanted to go on tour with us on the on the West Coast. And I said, hell yeah! Uh, you know, we want to get him involved too. We want everybody, yeah. any anybody that's awesome. We want to tour with them. We don't care who they are, as long as they sound good. That's all that matters. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah, man. All right, well, Andrew Himmler, we're just about out of time, but... Um, what? Man, 
Yeah, hey, man, I'm sorry, Robert. Uh, Big Sandy, don't get mad at me. It's a, it's a clock. <laughs> oh, I'm not, mad, I'm not at mad, mad at all. I'm just enjoying this whole this the whole process here, and yeah. I, and I'm glad uh, that you lined up uh, old Himmler here uh, to be because you know uh, we've been our bands have been friends for a long time. What I not enjoy more than his playing, but I, I get a huge kick out of your Facebook posts. You thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> You kind of get people. You, you, you kind of stir people up, but you get them thinking too. So I don't know if we have time yeah, to get into you, that, but that. I, I just wanted I to say that. Figure out the point of social media. Yeah. Shouldn't no, all what? be kitties and, you know. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kitties. No, not put, yeah. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I, I, it was just. It was more of a comment more than anything. Oh, okay. More than a question. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. So if people want to see Andrew Himmler's posts on social media, where are we going? Uh, you're going to go first to the, our Instagram, uh, at the Delta Bombers. Then we got Facebook, the Delta Bombers. And my name is Andrew Himmler. You're welcome to follow me on Instagram or Facebook also. Right on. Well, thank you very much for uh, being a part of our show, Andrew. Really appreciate it because, we you know, Delta Bombers are kind of up and coming, big rising band. So thanks for being a part of our show. Hey, hey, you're welcome. We're, happy, we're very happy to be here. Thanks a lot for having us. Good night, guys. Man, thank you so much, dude. Have a good night. Stay safe with your family, man. Good night. Okay, Cheers. we'll see you. Thanks, man. Okay. Uh, hey, Robert. Uh, excuse me, Big Sandy and Paul. Yes, sir. Hey, Larry. Hey. I'm sorry. I mean, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've only got one name, man. Hey, hey, Paul, for this yes, screen, lean, lean a little bit to your left. Lean to your left. Fashion. <laughs> Turn to the left. Fashion. Turn to <laughs> yes, the right. Yes, sir. Okay, that's I that's the end. That's pretty much the end of our show, man. Thank you guys for hanging out and watching the show. And I want to redirect you guys to go to uh, Atomic Swag. Check out Atomic Swag and see if you uh, there's anything over there that you like. You know, we got uh, uh, shirts for guys and gals. People people love it. See, there's their, there's a their logo. They, oh, it's not really coming in. There it is, Atomic Swag. So make sure you give those guys a, just look that over. If there's anything you like, uh, purchase something, help them out. And let's see. And uh, before we go, what do we got to say? You got anything, uh, uh, Mr. Big Sandy? What's happening with you this week? You got well, any gigs lined up? Just working behind the scenes on band stuff because, you know, like uh, like everybody else in the world, uh, and especially with the artists and musicians, all the work we had coming up, everything's canceled. So I'm working behind the scenes, uh, working beyond the shows that are canceled, try, trying to line, line up things for the rest of the year and into next year. Uh, Monday morning, we'll have a new website going up uh, with new merch on it, and uh, yeah, just just working on things behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. And looking about... forward to the next West Coast Ramble. That's right, that's right. Paul, what do you got going? Well, I can tell you this much: next week we got the High Jivers, and uh, everything else will be a little bit of a surprise. But we'll have another great show next week. Yeah. And uh, hey, thank you guys for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Please uh, share this. Uh, West Coast Ramble. That's really the only way we're going to get it out is by you guys sharing. So thanks a lot. It's really fun to put it together. And hopefully when this whole thing gets over, we'll have a big list of bands start playing in here a little bit, do some live stuff. But what really makes the show good is when everyone is commenting in and I'm trying to like put them up here. It's, it's really fun. And also it's fun to have uh, Robert because he has new lighting today. Look at him. Isn't he handsome? Who? You. Oh, excuse me. Big Sandy. Mr. Big Sandy. Yeah, yeah. There. And then you and uh, thanks, Paul. I, I love the way that you made that Millennium Falcon in the back of your shot. In the back of your shot, there, you made that yourself. That's amazing. I did. <laughs> All right, friends. That's it for West Coast Ramble. Let me see. Give you a little bit of music out, and uh, let us know if there's anything else you want to hear, see, or do on the next show. And um, I think that's about it. We'll see you next time on West Coast Ramble. Yeah. 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 See you guys later. Wash your hands. And your feet. And your ass. <laughs>